Hello and welcome to Board Deck and Dice. My name is Herbert, Tamer of Wild Chaffinches. Today we are reviewing Arcane Academy from IDW and from designer Eric Lang and Kevin Wilson. So some big names on this one. Arcane Academy is a tile laying, pattern making sort of game where you're trying to build your engine to complete the most assignments first. In Arcane Academy, every player will have a player board, a will counter, which we set to three, some shards, which they will start with three of, and a hand of three cards. The cards are the assignments that you can complete. There are two types of assignments, spell and item. Um, spells activate immediately when you complete them, and items can be used either automatically when something happens or you can use an action which I'll show you in a bit how to do to uh, use them. When you complete an assignment you pay the cost illustrated there and at the end of the game they are worth a certain amount of victory points. As well as the three in your hand there is a common set of four dealt on the table and when everyone completes one another one is dealt. Also on the table is four tiles, some victory point markers, some exhaustion tokens and a bag of more tiles. What you will be doing over the course of the game is activating certain icons to give yourself more abilities. Uh, in the first instance, you're probably going to be activating this to get you a new tile. So this gets you a new tile, this gets you will or a shard, this lets you complete an assignment or use an action. Remember I showed you on the cards early, earlier. And then the only other one you need to know is the wild, which lets you take any action at all. I think it's called chaos magic in the game. So you would simply take an exhaustion token and use that, and I would buy another tile. The other option I have on my, I then place it on here, and the other option I have on my go is to rest, which lets me remove all exhaustion tokens. So let's say I have done something like this over the course of my go. Now, after I've built up my tiles a bit more like this, and you can cover up tiles as long as you always have a complete assignment um, showing, icon showing. So let's say I've got to this point in the game. Now, you'll notice that some of the tiles have these circles on. Wherever you've joined two circles, you have created a link which will be activated whenever you use a tile next to them if you want. So, uh, if I activate this tile, I also get to use this one, this one, this one, and if there had been one there, I could use that one. However, if this one, for whatever reason, were that way around, they're not linked, so I would not be able to use this one. Any you use as a bonus, don't get exhausted. Only the first action you take gets exhausted. So later on in the go, I could come over here and I could use this one and then activate these, uh, sorry, this one as well. Or I could use that one and then activate that one or that one. And you'll have a big web of things. So the maximum you're going to be able to use goes you're going to be able to have in one, actions you're going to be able to have in one turn or off tiles is five. Some also let you do two things. Um, and this creates a really interesting and cool engine because if you combine these with some of the um, spell cards, remove an exhaustion token from your slate, so I could go, boom, I'm going to use that, I get my, I get that for free, so I'm completing assignments, so that goes there, remove an exhaustion, and the next go I get to use another up to five actions. So you can create some really interesting um, chains of abilities. When someone completes eight assignments, they take the pencils down card and everyone else, including that player, gets one more go. The aim is to get as most victory points possible, which are on the, on the um, assignments, but also some assignments will let you bump up your victory point tokens and add them to cards or take them away from opponents. So as the game goes on, you might have more token more victory points than just what's on the card so it's not always a case of just buying the ones with the biggest victory points you're actually looking up the abilities they do as well that is arcane academy arcane academy is a funny old game on the one level it has some lovely components the shards the cubes the punch board is good for the tiles 
But then you come down to the player mats and they are just kind of normal card that looks like it's not going to last very long. The cards themselves are okay. The spell, the will trackers are pretty terrible. They just spin too much. It's not a spinner. You want this to accurately track and there's a lot of give there and punching these out, the dials underneath had some tears on them. So it's a real mixed bag, but you do, speaking of bags, you do get a lovely tile bag. Um, it's a real mixed bag of components. Um, however, the gameplay is good enough for me to forgive that actually, because it's a real clever little build your own engine that's going to achieve what you want it to achieve and in the quickest way and you're looking at the powers that are out there, what other people are going for. There is an opportunity to mess them up a little bit, to steal victory points tokens from them. So if someone thinks they're winning, you can come in and steal them away. It generally plays quite quick because by the time it comes back around to you, you've kind of got a game plan in mind. The, the variety of tiles, there is a variety of tiles, but it's not that great that you can't adjust what you were going to do if you were planning to buy a tile. Um, so yeah, the intimidation factor here, it looks higher than it is, I would say, on this one. There is icons to learn, but there's only a few of them. Um, there is cards with seemingly a lot of information on, but again, it's all actually relatively straightforward. The rule book is really good and really clear and there's a lot of fun to be had here. It scales well, it plays well with two players, it plays well with three and four players. So there's a lot to like here. It is fairly abstract, I guess, in one sense. You're just kind of building your own little um, engine and kind of operating it. So it could, it, it, this theme Bits, but didn't have to be this theme. Um, but I've had a lot of fun with this one, and it's an easy one to play, it's an easy one to get out and teach. And so if you think you're gonna like that sort of system, it, it's, a, it's a fairly easy recommendation for me, um, even given the kind of even given the kind of mixed quality of uh, components. It would be nice to see some real thick cardboard for these. And, and they're double-sided, I don't know why. Why are these double-sided? They're exactly the same on both sides. Why? There seems like a bit of a missed, anyway, a bit of a missed opportunity. If you can double-side them, make them different on the back. Um, but yeah, I can see expansions coming out for this. I'm rumbling now, so I'm going to end the review. You've heard what you need to know. I've been Herbert Irby, a tamer of wild challenges. This is Board Deck and Dice, and we will see you again next time. Thanks for watching.